here are a couple um, multiple choice questions that I took off one of the, out of the, one of the review books for AP Calculus, and this is, uh, MC is multiple choice. Uh, I chose these three because they were in order, one, two, three, and they all used the same equation. They were asking similar questions, and I thought, you know what, Th here's two birds with one stone. So find the value of C guaranteed by the mean value theorem for f of x is equal to 2 over the quantity x minus 1 on the open interval 3 to 5. Well, first you have to remember a little bit of of mean value theorem. And mean value theorem, if you remember, tells us what? Right, it says that they are, that f prime at c is equal to f of b minus f of a over b minus a. <coughs> Excuse me. And as I looked at this, I was like, you know what, this is really simple because they give us really easy math. So did f of 3, so f of 3, because we need to do f of 5 minus f of 3, right? Here's a. And here's B. So F of 3 is 3 minus 2. Uh, sorry, 3 minus 1 is 2, and 2 over 2 is equal to 1. So that will help us. And F of 5, F of 5, because remember 5 is the B value here. F of 5, 5 minus 1 is 4, and 2 over 4 is equal to 1 half. So we have this F prime at C. This guaranteed value is 1 half. Minus 1, but if you don't mind, I'm going to put it in as minus 2 halves. Remember, 2 halves is this 1. So this is 1, if you're wondering 1. And it's this 1 right here. This is still minus 1, isn't it? Over b minus a. Well, b minus a. 5 minus 3 is 2. And that would give us negative 1 half over 2. I'm going to keep in mind that 2, if you write this as a complex fraction, would look like that, wouldn't it? And then what we do is we multiply the numerator by the reciprocal of the denominator. So that would be negative 1 half times 1 over 2 times 1 half would be equal to negative 1 fourth, right? So we have our, we have this value here that we're going to be going with. And now I'm going to differentiate this really quickly. So f of x is equal to 2 over x minus 1. So that's the same as x minus 1 to the negative first power, isn't it? And if we differentiate really quickly, we get negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. If we decrement this, this becomes to the, so f prime at x is equal to negative 2 times x minus 1. This is to the negative first, so minus 1 is negative 2. Put that back underneath if you don't mind, right? This is a negative exponent. Is x minus 2. I don't know why I want it to be x minus 2. It's x minus 1. It is x minus 1 squared, isn't it? So that's the first derivative. And we're going to set that equal to this value. So we have negative 1 half is equal to negative 2 over x minus 1 squared. I'm going to cross multiply. I'm going to move this negative sign to the bottom just to make it cleaner. And I'm going to get, I'm going to get here that 8 is equal to x minus 1 squared. Yeah? Take the square root of both sides as we solve this. Square root of both sides. Square root, square root there. Uh, the square root of 8 for right now. Well, you know what? Let's just do it. The square root of 8 is square root of 2 times square root of 4. And square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 2 is square root of 2 is equal to, and the square root of this thing is x minus 1. So, of course, going to add 1 to both sides, plus 1, plus 1. And our answer is, our guaranteed value is x is equal to 1 plus 2 square roots of 2. So, that was kind of rugged. That was a lot to do. The reason that I want to keep moving with this is because as we go to the next question, it uses the same equation. And the question is, is Rolle's theorem applicable? Is Rolle's theorem applicable to f of x is equal to the same thing, 2 over x minus 1. That's the same equation we had in the first question, but now this is question number 2 on 3, five, hello, 3, 5.
But what do we have to remember about what do we have to remember about Rolle's theorem? Well, in Rolle's theorem, we had we had to remember that f of a must equal f of b, and without doing any other work, because we did f of a and f of b in the last in the last problem, and we got that f of a was equal to one, and f of b was equal was equal to one half. Was well, one equal to one half? It is not. So in this so why isn't Rolle's theorem applicable? Because f of a is not equal to f of b. <clears throat> so I think that was really straightforward. What did you have to know? Well, you had to remember what Rolle's theorem was, and hopefully you put that on uh, index cards and you have that memorized. I think when you go into the AP exam, when you these things you have memorized, it's going to pay off so well for you. I, I could go on all day, and you know me, so I won't. Uh, question three. Question three says, write the equation of a tangent line. So write the, well, hello, equation of the tangent line. Guess what f of x is? That's right. f of x is equal to 2 over x minus 1. And we want that for x is equal to 3. Well, this is pretty good. Uh, we have to know what the derivative is, but we already know because we already did it, right? So we're going to carry our work from the last problem forward. And if you remember, this was the derivative, right? We don't need to prove this again. This is a multiple choice question, right? We also know that when x is 3, so we know that f of 3 is equal to 1, don't we? Now all we need to do is figure out, well, what is f prime at 3? Three. What's the slope of the line tangent to the curve where x is equal to 3? And all we do is fill in the blanks here. And it's 3 minus 1 squared. And 3 minus 1 is 2. 2 squared is 4. So f prime of 3 is equal to negative 1 half. So far, so good. I, I really am I'm hoping that you're going, oh my gosh, this is really going to help. Because I think that you can we can anticipate a little bit of this. And we have to kind of play to our strengths the best that we can. So remember that 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 point slope theorem is y minus y sub 1 is equal to m. Remember that it's f prime at x times x minus x sub 1. And you know what, I, if I'm going to write this correctly, I might as well write it all correctly. This is f of x sub 1, isn't it? So we just fill in the blanks here. Y minus 1 is equal to, we know that this is negative 1 half, isn't it? Negative 1 half there. So it's equal to negative 1 half times x. And we said when x is 3, so minus 3. Do a little bit of algebra here. We get y is equal to uh, negative one half x plus three halves. I'm just multiplying, distributing through here and here. I'm going to go ahead and add this positive, this have a negative one here, so I'm going to add a positive one to both sides. I'm going to add it in the form of two over two. That's one, isn't it? So if you're wondering where this came from, this one right here is this one, isn't it? Okay, now we get y is equal to negative one half x plus five halves. The problem here is that our answer, the answer that they gave us in the book, our selections, they put this into standard form, which means um, that this value of x must be a whole number. So what I'm going to do is multiply the whole thing by 2. Let's see if that doesn't clean it up. So we get 2y equals negative x plus 5, doesn't it? Right? 2 over 2 is, is negative 1. This would be 2 times 5 is 10. 10 over 2 is 5, right? And now we can rearrange it here. Remember that it's in the form ax plus by is equal to c. That's the standard form of a line. So I'm going to add x to both sides. So we get x plus 2y is equal to 5. So um, I think you can anticipate some of this happening on the exam. And when it does, I hope that you recognize and say, oh my gosh, okay, I don't need to... Re uh, keep recalculating everything I have this I have this stuff done
Okay, I hope that was helpful, and that's out of your AMSCO book. Uh, page 121, questions uh, sorry. 1, 2, and 3, and in the other video I did question 4, so I hope that's helpful. Keep studying.